Hey, everyone. This is Steve, Super Coach, providing Super Coach content for you. I'm here to present the Sydney Melbourne Review. And uh, everyone was um, not really liking the game in the first half, but uh, it turned out to be a really good game in the end. The second half was fantastic. Sydney pull, pulled away in the last quarter, so here we are. Um, I've had a little, little bit to drink, so uh, I thought I'd just, you know, say that out, out loud there. Uh, just in case I'm a little bit slow when it comes to my words. But um, yeah, anyway, let's get into it. Um, I, I want to get this out pretty quick. Smart because uh, just so if I can try to beat everyone else that uh, uploads their uh, reviews of the game. So let's get into it. So uh, first game of the year, good to have Goody back, of course. So that's always the main thing. So uh, we got Isaac Heaney, score 144. He's going to get people tempted, that's for sure. Like, 100, 144 is massive. Forward option. Um, so, oh, yeah, so it's interesting. He had 26 touches, five marks, seven tackles. Played a lot more in the midfield just due to, obviously, the absences of um, of Parker, Mills, and Adams. So, uh, they unleash Heaney in the midfield. We hear this every year, but it actually happened in an AFL game, which is pretty crazy. So, um, yeah, this will get a lot of people thinking. Will I go there? Personally, not at the minute, uh, just due to uh, uh, having the bloke that I'm going to talk about next and uh, Dacos in the team. Unless Dacos really shits the bed, then uh, I'm, I might move to Heaney just due to how well he went and uh, he's going to go up in price a fair bit, played midfield, looked really good. Like, don't get me wrong. If this was a regular fixture, I'd probably go with Heaney now, but I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. I just can't afford to go to more than two uh, primo buy round players. So uh, let's speak about Brady Grundy. Um, I was never really um, flirting with the idea of trading him out just because of still his value. I know he didn't present... Uh, he didn't present very well against Brisbane in the match practice game, but um, uh, I thought Grundy was, uh, I thought, uh, I mean, he's at that point of, the, of his career now where preseason games don't really matter too much to him. As long as he's fit and firing in the actual season, then uh, we get a good view on him. So, um, yeah, I really like Brody Grundy as a pick. I've always have, and uh, yeah, I'd be very surprised if anyone moved off Brody Grundy now because. At 481,000, when he's the solo ruck, we've seen what he's done in the past. Hard to go off him. So, uh, yeah, look, um, I can understand people moving off him just because of, I guess, he didn't present, I, I he didn't sh give us much confidence in the practice games, and uh, as well as as well as um, in the uh, with having one uh, two buys during the season. That does make my opinion a bit harsher on certain players if they have that early buy. But uh, Grundy, the value's there, man. And uh, I think we just got to go there. So um, anyone else? Just trying to think of players that have been on my radar. Uh, James Jordan, I thought the role was awful, but still scored an 81. Uh, he's, a, we, he's, a be, he's always been a good accumulator of the ball. That hasn't been in any question during his career. He's always been able to rack up the ball. It's just more about what type of role he can get. And the role wasn't that great. Scored in 81. I wasn't massively impressed, but I wasn't dissatisfied. Like, I think Jordan, uh, I think a lot of people were overreacting in the first quarter. And look, so was I, I guess, because I was thinking, okay, I've now got to think of a plan to get rid of James Jordan as well as Jack Billings. We'll get to Jack Billings, but uh, yeah. Uh, scored in 81. We're happy with that. I'll, he'll still be staying on my side. A lot of people with, went with Errol Goulden, and if he went off tonight, I would personally be I, w I was going to personally find a massive way to get this man into my team without killing my structure. And uh, fair to say, look, the problem with Goulden was, um, look, during preseason, I called him a trap. And, uh, and then last night, I reiterated and said that Gordon isn't a trap. Like all these midfielder injuries to Sydney will lead him into being the main guy in the CBAs. 
That wasn't the case. They were still playing him a lot on the wing still. Obviously, he was still getting the ball. I mean, 20 touches on the wing, but he wasn't using he wasn't using the ball very well. And look, that's what happens when you play on a wing. There's a lot of inconsistency when it comes to uh, the scoring. So that's why originally I didn't like him as a super coach pick uh, at that price because I know that when you play wing role, and we saw that last season, he obviously had some really massive spike games, but at the same time, he can lead, he can have those um, really average games. So uh, where he can drop a 60 or 40 here and there. 77 is not that bad. Let's be honest. Like it's not that bad, but at that price, it's a bit disappointing. And uh, people that had him in, in their team would have been left disappointed. So uh, that's something. Uh, so I think Gordon's going to drop a fair bit in ownership. I do think he's still very good for the long run, but I do think, uh, as I said before, we can get him at a cheaper price than what he is. He's just that. He's, it's just the player in that type of role. That's what we can get. Matty Roberts killed it in the first half, really slowed up in the second half, but I really like his ability to accumulate, very similar to James Jordan. 19 touches, uh, and uh, 156k, and uh, yeah, I might have to consider putting him back on field uh, because I really like this kid. I think he's an absolute ripper. So fair play, fair play, and uh, I think surely he's now best 23 for Sydney. I'd like to think now, um, even with uh, some of their outs, I thought he was terrific. Probably just needs to work on his game outside of. Um, getting the ball i know that sounds weird but uh maybe laying a i mean it'll come with more pre-seasons but laying a few more tackles that sort of thing i thought his um i thought his disposal efficiency at times was a little bit average so i'm sure he can clean that up is there anyone else much else to talk about with sydney not to my knowledge i think we covered that pretty clearly let's go to the losing team melbourne who i thought were pretty disappointing and uh maybe tonight was just a perfect example of why uh, in terms of teams' prospects for this season, we shouldn't rely too much on preseason games. Um, yeah, Jack Viney was excellent. Not a super coach classic pick, but he's just the real heart and soul of their club. I thought he was outstanding. Christian Petrarca, I know some people are pretty interested in him. I think he's roughly twenty one percent ownership, but one hundred and eight. You're gonna get from uh, you're gonna get this from Christian Petrarca each week. He is just a consistent beast. And uh, I really rate him. I'd like to get him to my final side. Obviously, the early buy puts me off, of course. So uh, that's the thing. But um, yeah, I think Christian Petrarca, he's currently priced at 667K to my knowledge. Um, I don't think he'll be moving too much down from that. I think I think it would be a pretty good price getting him at roughly like 620K at some point during the year. McVeigh was good. Now let's talk about Blake Howes. This is very interesting because now with a score of a 91, he had 74% time on ground. I thought he really held his own. He really, sh I think it was one of the perfect examples of why I prefer picking players, um, not rookie players, sort of more uh, bargain basement rookie prices that have had like two or three preseasons or more uh, at, at a cheap price because their body develops a lot. Their body's a lot more developed compared to a first year rookie player. So I do like Blake Howes, and I think we have to really consider getting him to getting him into our super coach team. Um, what's the fantasy points? Seventy four to ninety one percent. Uh, seventy four points in fantasy, ninety one in super coach. So a bit of a difference there, but I wouldn't be too fussed with that so yeah i think it's now time to find a way to get him into your side we'll have to see how josh kipkis goes on saturday against the suns but i thought blake house didn't look out of place whatsoever i thought he was sort of looked like more of a lockdown defender and maybe the conditions did suit him uh better compared to some of the taller options but i thought he really held his own super well and i think he's bought some really good job security for the time being Clayton Oliver, after a limited preseason, still got 30 touches, but uh, 80, uh, 90 super coach points. So, um, look, I, I just don't think he's an option. Um, very limited preseason. Uh, obviously, he's going through his personal troubles, or he has been. Don't 
don't know what the situation is, but I do wish him all the best because I've met Clary. He's a ripper bloke. No issues with him. He's an absolute beauty. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought he played a very solid game. Nothing to write home about, but I thought uh, an 82 percent time on ground as well. So um, that's actually pretty impressive for a bloke that hasn't had the best of preseasons. As we go down to Max Gorn at 72 super coach points, which is interesting. Um, he was on like 64, maybe 60 at half time. And then he just did, and then Brody Grundy just destroyed Grundy tonight. Uh, Brody Grundy destroyed Max Gorn tonight. Um, I know Max Gorn won the hitouts, but Brody Grundy might have opened up an opportunity for opposition ruckman to stop max gorn where you really limit his mobility in the ruck and that's where he, and that's where max gorn kills you the most like what what Brody grunny would do is he would rush to the uh he'd, he'd rush to max gorn when the ball is bounced and uh limit his mobility make it more of a uh maybe make it more of a tug of war match up there so i thought that was super interesting with uh, Brody Grundy's tactic, and there might be a thing that catches on with opposition Ruckman. Um, uh, back to back to Brody Grundy. By the way, will this score? Will this kind of score keep up? Absolutely not. Like, there's going to be like he knows how to ruck against Max Gorn. He's been he's done a full year in, at Melbourne rucking against this bloke. He knows the certain tactics and might have exposed Max Gorn in certain tactics, maybe to opposition Ruckman. But um, I'll be interested to see how he goes against uh, Tim English, uh, Rowan Marshall, uh, Kieran Briggs, that sort of thing. There's going to be different tactic tactics on how to stop them, and he wouldn't know how to stop them. So, um, look, I think Brody Grunny's a perfectly fine option, and he, uh, I mean, he's a very good option. But uh, don't expect this every week. Max Gorn, I thought in the second half he looked super. He looked old, didn't he? I thought he looked pretty old tonight in the second half where he was just uh, not at his best. And uh, I think Grundy physically was tiring, tiring him out. Now I think a bloke like Tim English, who isn't as physically dominant as uh, Max Gorn. Uh, I think Gorn will find that, uh, that matchup a lot easier. So look, I wouldn't be too concerned. Maybe it's something to think about. Maybe, because Gorn, past few years has always come with inconsistency, and um, maybe and just keep in mind that this this ain't going to be a Tim English sort of situation where you can bank on this bloke. I think Gorn getting up there in age now. I think we're expecting maybe a, you know, there there there'll be weeks where he goes one sixty against um, the Carlton Rucks or the Hawthorne Rucks or the West Coast Rucks or whoever the Rucks may be that are easier matchups. But there might be some games as well where he just doesn't look like the old Max Gorn. Like, uh, I think there might be... Uh, I think Gorn's still a good pick, but I don't think he's going to be as good as people's... As um, they were suggesting. Suggest, suggesting. So, um, yeah, I would still pick Gorn, but just keep that in mind. Caleb Windsor, 58. With the amount of value that we've got, I don't think we got enough from Windsor. In a, in a pretty average role... First year player, like a prefer like a Blake Howes type over a Windsor. I don't think he's a Billings replacement. I, I I've never been too hot on him during preseason. I know everyone was really up and about with him against the Carlton game, but uh, I just remember to stick to the process of me thinking, all right, first year player playing in a bad role. We need to see how this plays out. And look, fifty eight. I thought he I thought he built into the game very well. But at the end of the day, I just don't think 58 uh, is going to do enough for me at 180K. So um, wins as a pass. And probably the um, – I'll quickly touch on Bailey Laurie. Um, he'll probably get dropped next week. Didn't really look too – didn't really do too much at all. A um, bit disappointing from him. But especially in conditions that could probably suit smaller forwards, just uh, looked a bit shaky. So, no. Nah. Uh, and Jack Billings, I mean, he had a quarter and a half and still only scored an 11, uh, 11 super coach points. So I thought he was very disappointing when he came on and I was very disappointed that he was named sub. 
Um, yeah, so now he shouldn't be a pick. In draft, it's fine because he he might not be the sub next week and very likely he won't be the sub next week. But I've just seen Supercoach Classic. I mean, I'm pretty sure BE means break even on this website. I'm using DFS Australia, so share to them. I think they do the best um, quarter by quarter stats uh, for the games, live scoring, that sort of thing. So share to them. Uh, so they're doing it. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, Jack Billings. So, yeah, I just, I just didn't think that. Yeah, we just, yeah, we just got to take him out of our side. It's as simple as that. Uh, because in Supercoach Classic, I believe, yeah, I believe this is break even. So, I believe he has a sixty break even, and uh, he scored an eleven tonight. So, um, he'll actually drop in price a fair bit now after the uh the sub score. So. Yeah, probably one to obviously take out of your side. I'm going to go to my team real quick now. So I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Um, sorry if I'm stumbling, stumbling with my words a little bit here, but I'm sure you guys enjoy it. Um, hope, you, hope you guys do. <laughs> um, look, let's... So this is my current team right now. It's the exact same team as I had in my team reveal. So... Um, look, there's probably a couple of things that we need to address. I think for now, I'm going to keep Gorn and Grundy. Uh, we'll definitely keep Grundy. Gorn, look, everyone was off Grundy last week and everyone was on Grund uh, Gorn this week. Everyone's off Gorn probably now and everyone's on Grundy. So I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to keep the two. There's still super good value each way with these options. So I'm probably just going to keep it. Um, Gorn, I didn't, I, I, at the time, I wanted to get him in like four hours ago. I wanted to get him in, but I just found it hard with Grundy and Dacos as well with the same buy. But uh, now, yeah, no, nah, I don't think many, I don't think too many people will be going there. But uh, Gordon does have good matchups coming up. So Jordan stays, Billings has to go. So yeah, and Roberts definitely stays. I might even take out Hustway just to make sure Roberts is on field. But I guess. Um, there's two things that I need to adjust with this team now after seeing this game. Now, obviously, there will be a lot more changes that comes with round zero. It's obviously taking out Jack Billings, and it's obviously trying to bring in um, Blake Howes. Now, I think teams for next week will certainly help with that decision, whether Nick Caulfield gets named. I don't think he's a guarantee to get named. He could be a sub-candidate. So we're just going to have to wait and see on that. So... Um, and yeah, there's still a few things I need to adjust, maybe bring in Luke Jackson, that sort of thing. So this team is far from complete. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, certainly need to make a decision on billings. I just don't know which decision to make exactly with that. So we'll leave it there, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and, um, hope you enjoyed the review of the game and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Bye.